duct okay. tape. There we go, baby. Building cell structure. Oh! Battery anode. All right. Harvest tater. Blend tater into mashes. Mash. Oh, no. Complete tater cell. Oh, dude, it's so heavy. This is a potato battery cell. Let me explain what's going on here. Pro science. You remember those videos that were going around for a while of people plugging their USB into a lemon and then charging their iPhone with it? Well, those are bait and a lie and obnoxious. <laughs> The science doesn't work that way. But like the premise of what's happening is legit. Like you can get electricity out of a lemon with a whole bunch of lemons. You can get a very small amount of electricity out of there, like to power a little motor or something. But that got my little gamer brain think big gamer brain. How many lemons would it take to power my computer, right? Because that's that's something I can get behind. I ran some quick numbers. Turns out it would take like 600,000 lemons. That's a lot of lemons. Even if each lemon is 50 cents. That's like $300,000 of lemons. Bruh. But I didn't stop there, obviously, because a video exists that you're watching. And as it turns out, there's a whole bunch of fruit that you can get electricity out of. There's grapefruit, potato, bananas, I think even work. But the thing is, I needed... I needed... Oh, you know, with as few edible items as possible. And so the food that produces the most electricity when done properly is the potato. So in this video, we're gonna be learning what it takes to get enough power out of potatoes to power a Windows computer. We'll also be learning how disgusting potatoes get when you let them sit for a very long time. I'm not gonna claim to be some sort of genius scientist here. Everything I'm about to tell you, I learned about two weeks ago on Google. To get electrical current out of a potato, you need a piece of copper and a piece of zinc. Galvanized nail in, copper wire here. We're gonna poke it right in. The phosphorus that's naturally in the potato acts as like a battery acid, which creates a bridge for the ions in the two elements. Ion bridge, a bridge for ions. These ions traveling are what creates our electricity. 0.944 volts, one milliamp from tater. So essentially what you're creating here is a copper zinc battery made out of a potato. There's like a thousand how-to articles on Google on how to do this, but they're all powering like a little light, and I wanted to power a lot more than a little oh. light. So naturally the next step was figuring out how to get the most electricity with the copper and the zinc out of the potato. Good evening, gamer. We got taters. Big tater, little. First we did a control test. 0.9 volts. And then we tried little tater. Little tater. We did sweet potato. Plain sweet potato. We tried taters with From nipples. our nipple potato. We tried microwave taters. This is our test on our microwave potato. We did mashed taters. So mashing the potatoes together does something. I poured coke on a mashed mm. potato. Phosphate. I tried putting a bunch of extra nails in a potato. I even strung a bunch of potatoes together. We are now stringing together all of our potatoes. Which we'll get into later. Seven potatoes gets us 0 0.01 milliamps. I quickly found out through my research that boiling the potato produces 10 times more electricity. So we're gonna see how much more power we get out of a boiled potato. Yes! Oh, bro! It does something to the phosphates in it. I'm not gonna get that deep into it, okay? So now, instead of 600,000 lemons, with our high-powered potatoes, we need 100,000 potatoes. Mm, bruh. That's not good still. But then I discovered, bro, some article of some guy that a long time ago was like, I'm a scientist and this is the best way to get electricity from potatoes. Plates of zinc and plates of copper. Mashed them together, dude. Let's just rest it. So there, essentially, that should be a battery. Oh my! One sliver of potato is creating 4.5 amps in this scenario, applying pressure Oh my goodness, with pressure and full contact, six milliamps of potato power. It's all about the surface area. The surface area of the copper, surface area of the zinc. Dude, put those on the <laughs> potato. So one potato, I'm able to make three cells with my copper and my zinc plates, dude. So what does this mean if each cell makes 0.9 volts and about six milliamps a piece? The PC that we've been using takes about 50 watts to boot and run. And you get your wattage by multiplying amps times volts. So if a single potato can make three separate cells and each cell makes about 0.9 volts at six milliamps, then that's 16.2 milliwatts per potato or about 3,000 potatoes to get 50 watts. And now we're getting somewhere, baby. But remember, 
I learned all of this on Google very recently. This 13 second segment is called how to wire potatoes. If you wire batteries in series, it adds the voltages together. We got 2.6 volts, sick. If you wire batteries in parallel, it adds the amperages together. 16 milliamps. Nice and simple. Wiring. Which brings us back to here, where I've discovered the best way to harvest power from potatoes. Oh my goodness, boys! 0.6 amps, we need three of these! It's doable, the science is gonna be doable! Huge sheets of zinc and copper with boiled freaking mashed taters between them, dude. I boiled potatoes in a turkey fry for eight hours. 0.8 volts and 0.6 amps. All wired together to where we can now finally test if our caveman theory of small potato makes small power, boiled potato make larger power, large potato power equal make power computer, and see if it's correct. The final squish. This is the final step. All we should have to do is lay all of the pieces of zinc on top of each potato thing. Seven large cells are wired in parallel, producing 0.6 amps a piece. Then I have 20 smaller cells wired in series, creating a higher voltage. 16 times four. 64 watts. So that means it should power my computer, right? This is the moment we've been waiting for. There's a chance it doesn't work, but here we go. Now we plug it in and just hope it works. I don't think it's working. Uh, it didn't work. And I'm sure you all know why, because you're all genius electricians. Type one of your electrician. One, 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 one. We spent four hours on stream yeah. troubleshooting with chat. Follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash basically home. I stream weekdays, 4 p.m. since standard time. We even broke out MS Paint, baby. That's how you know it got serious. Fire coming out of here as our positive. Uh, 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 and uh, then sorry, I think I need to something this, happened. This wire, and then remove this wire. Gamers rallied in chat. Connect my positive. And we found the, the here, proper wiring. Right? So there was a sliver of hope. Let's freaking get it. And we rewired it, and we tried it again. Then it didn't work again. Positive and a negative. Positive and a negative. Positive and a negative. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I actually started cleaning and almost canceled the video. And freaking turkey fries in here. Flames under. I don't have enough ventilation. I'm freaking sucking the oxygen straight out the air. So there I am, live, with a bunch of boiled mashed potatoes, a large amount of copper and zinc, and a painful lack of oxygen in my red blood cells. So I overlooked a very crucial part of any circuit with a battery in it, and that is the resistance of the battery. It's the resistance of a potato. Let me go measure it. It was a lot. So let me explain what that means. When you wire something in series, the current has to flow through each battery. Potato, because potato potatoes are the batteries. Instead of it just being your voltage times your amperage equals your wattage, it's your voltage times your amperage minus the resistance. I think I speak for everyone when I say, get out of here, resistance. Potatoes, a lot of resistance. Dude, where are our amps at? Which means we no longer have our 60 plus watts to power our computer. I tweeted William Osman out of desperation, and he told me to seek immediate medical assistance. But I'm not going to do that because I'm scared of what they'll tell me. And so I dropped the voltage down to 5 volts. Rewired all of this into series. Because that means we need less potatoes in series, which means we overall have less resistance. So that means more amperage. Are you following me here? In doing this, we created a pretty significant amperage charging. increase. It says charging! from my potatoes to 0.18. So that super lowers the resistance. What we end up with is a potato power reservoir that outputs five volts at 200 milliamps, which isn't enough to power our computer directly even after we switch to this lower wattage computer. But if we accumulate all of this potato power and then shoot it straight into our PC really fast, we may be able to run our PC for a short period of time. Now that's some bro science. When there is zero juice left in this, we will then charge it with our taters. I took this battery pack, fully depleted it. It's not charging either of my batteries. Now when I press the button, it just flashes a little blue light, completely discharged and not powering my iPhone and not powering this battery. And then we filled it with potato power. <laughs> I'm not crazy. Now plugging in our completely drained power cell into the five volts, the really low amperage, Oh my goodness, it started flashing. I actually didn't think it was We're charging that completely drained battery with a potato cell. I really didn't think it was gonna work. It's doing it, oh. Now this is the full rundown of what we got going on here. So you can see that it is indeed potato power and not anything fishy. 
what you're seeing here is a five day time lapse of a man harvesting potato power and accumulating it within this small battery pack. I was on my one year anniversary vacation with my wife. Thank you for all the nice words on Instagram. I think the most shocking part of all of this is that for five days straight, it was actually continuously charging our battery. Back from my anniversary, it's still charging which I, it is farther than I thought it was gonna get. I thought for sure all of these were gonna discharge and just not work anymore or something. So a week later, here we are, ready to see if it will power a Windows computer. After weeks of bro science and boiling so many potatoes and such bad smells, it all came down to the moment where we have 100% potato energy. We plugged that into our lower wattage computer. Test really quick what voltage this is putting out. It's doing 4.25 volts and it, the amperage is gone. So here it is with our one bar of power. Now we will attempt to power our computer entirely off the potato energy. This was completely depleted, and now we plug it in. Let's turn on the monitor first. We're not gonna have much time. Okay, got our one bar of power. Come on, dude, I don't know how much, I don't know how long it's gonna last. It's coming on, okay. This is, this is powered entirely by potatoes. This is 100%. Potato power, powering on our compute stick. It's booted, it's posted, it's, we're powering a computer with potatoes. How long is it gonna last? How long is our potato energy gonna last? It's flashing? Okay, it's trying to come on. It's on, it's on, we've been, we're, we're in the OS. We're literally, okay, we're inside the OS, entirely off of it. Okay, now we're gonna plug in our mouse and keyboard. For the first time in history, a computer is powered entirely from the energy of potatoes. So, oh, what did it do? That was it. That's all we got. That counts, dude. It freaking counts. For it 15 the seconds, we powered a Windows computer entirely with power harvested from potatoes. The next time, just plug it into the wall, man. Most places have you can plug it into the wall and then you don't have to get the potatoes. Oh! <laughs> It smells so bad in here. I don't even like french fries anymore. Dude, that's disgusting. I don't need medical assistance. I time-lapsed my potato. Let's all say thanks again to Opera GX for supporting this channel and use my link in the description to download and don't worry if you're on mobile, you'll get an email that'll have a download link later. It's the man with the Wii remote.